uh, talk to me like, like they talk down to me essentially. They're like, because I'm in a wheelchair, they, t they treat me differently. But some people don't do that. Like I have two great friend groups that don't do that. And those kids at drama camp are so nice. And like, they completely talk to me like, like they should. Like, yeah, basically how they should. So yeah. let everybody know, like, so some people will meet us and they'll say, hi, John and Cheryl. They'll be like, hi, Jake. And that is not like what he's looking for. He's looking, you know, why, he's like, why do you talk differently to my parents than you do me? So that's a good lesson um, to learn when you see someone in a wheelchair. Yeah. They're totally cool and normal. And these are just their legs. Yeah. Well, and Jake's 13, not four. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I know drama camp just happened. Would you be comfortable talking a little bit about your first few days at drama camp? I think that illustrates some of the challenges that come along with having Duchenne and being in a wheelchair and why we're all working so hard to help these boys have um, more mobility and flexibility in their own lives because there are some real challenges. I was telling some of these, some of you guys, um, Jake and I got to have lunch the other day we had to go to three restaurants to be able to even get in the door. And it was such a tangible example of me. You think it's 2016 and everything's accessible. We literally went down the street to find a restaurant that we could get in the front door. So imagine that being part of your everyday life. Well, uh, you don't have to tell the story. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Uh, my first day at drama camp, uh, it wasn't bad. It was terrible. And <laughs> So on the first day, I wanted to leave immediately because I was practicing using a urinal to do my business <laughs> and it didn't work out so well the first day because, you know, there was like stains were involved on pants and I, that was pretty private and I couldn't really talk to anyone about that. Like that was very challenging. To like say like oh I peed my pants to someone and like can you help me? But nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, texted you help help <laughs> and, and I came and helped. Yeah, she did help and, and I, I was like I need to leave. I need to just get out of here. I'm going home. And but she she made me stay. She was bawling her eyes out in the car. Yeah, after I left him. Was, but then, as it went on, it ended up being an amazing thing, and I'm glad I didn't leave. And you made a lot of new friends. Yeah, a, like, like eight new friends, like a, in a new friend group, like, and it's not just those eight. I hung out with most of them most of the time, but I hung out with a ton of people there. Like, you can't even count them. So, it was, you know, the list goes on how many people I met there. It was a great experience. What else did you do? You did a solo? Oh yes, I did a solo at Wood Park. Which is a park? It was a song from Frozen, New Summer, that I chose to do because I said Frozen was my favorite musical. And that was awesome. And I learned how to sing there, so my singing skills are a lot better <laughs> than they are, others. They are, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Mine will never improve, but his were also. <laughs> so, Jake, those are amazing examples of perseverance and um, positive outcome. When you think back over um, being a child and a toddler and a young uh, teenager with Duchenne, um, what things have inspired you that got you to this point where you're so optimistic and so positive? Um, I've really always uh, been a happy kid, except uh, some of the side effects on the steroids when I got on them like kind of messed that up a little bit, but I'm, I'm happy again. And I really didn't know how to deal with it before. When I was first diagnosed, I really didn't know what it meant. So, but now I fully understand what it means. And I have a better attitude about it than before because I've really learned to live with it more than before as I've gotten weaker. So Jake's chosen not to be on steroids at this time because the side effects were so compellingly negative um, and the benefits didn't outweigh the side effects. So for now, he's not on steroids. And uh, I could really use a cure, but 
I'm not gonna worry about a cure being like too far away or anything like that because I'm gonna live in a present, in the present, and the present is a gift and that's why it's called the present.